Welcome back. The first edition of the Nairobi Tech Week ended over the weekend. The tech community in East Africa came together to network, pitch products, products and services, but more importantly, to learn from each other as well. They also had a chance to take part in the Smart City Nairobi Challenge. It's a hackathon to create a solution to a range of problems using Twitter's API. Now, Microsoft, Google, Upande and Africa is talking, also ran developer workshops at the event that was hosted by Nairobi's innovation hub, the iHub, and the Moringa School as well. Now, tech and coding is something we don't often talk about on this program, so let's dig right into that. Audrey Chang is the CEO of Moringa School, a Nairobi-based institution that focuses on training and coding skills. She's with me in studio right now. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Um, when we talk about coding, um, and this is, this is a subject that's relatively hard to find data on, mm. how big is a skills deficit, especially in Kenya? Uh, it's pretty big, it's pretty big. So in 2011, Kenya, they released a Julieship report. Mm -hmm. And in the report, it said that 45% of employers were not able to find qualified candidates for their roles, for their developer positions. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a huge, huge problem, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I think at Nairobi Tech Week, we were able to see that the other 55% who were able to find amazing, amazing developers. Mm -hmm. But that being said, there is still a really large skills gap in East Africa and across Africa as but a whole. When, when these employers say, we can't find the people we need, I mean, the next logical step would be, if you do find people who are 20%, 40% sure. there, yeah. would you invest in actually training these people as an employer? Mm -hmm. Um, so many employers do, right? Mm. So there's employers like Cellulant that have set up training programs mm. where they take college grads and train them. But that's yeah. very resource intensive, both mm. time and money wise. Mm. So it doesn't make sense for a business whose core uh, business mm. uh, is not to train. So. Right. Let, let me step back a bit because okay. a lot of every time we breach this subject, um, mm -hmm. a lot of people watching this will probably say, I'm a doctor. <laughs> sure. I'm, I'm a finance guy. I trade stocks. Why do you need to learn coding? Why, why is it so important? So I strongly, strongly believe that tech is not the solution, right? Mm. Tech rather is a tool mm. that will help uh, the solutions that are being created now in terms of like infrastructure, education, health, finance, whatnot. Um, what we're finding is a lot of our students when they graduate, um, they're becoming entrepreneurs, right? They're starting their own companies yeah. and in creating these innovations through technology, more and more industry players are recognizing that if you don't jump on the bandwagon and start using tech, mm. then you're actually going to be falling behind. Mm. Um, and, th and these are skills that almost anyone needs to know nowadays. So it should, there's a strong case to be made then for integrating yes. what you guys teach mm -hmm. into the wider curriculum because yes. I mean, increasingly even what we're doing here now mm -hmm. is running on tech of some sort or other, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, mm. exactly. Right, let's move on to the Tech Week. Um, you ran quite a few mm -hmm. interesting things there, the hackathon that we just mentioned, developing yeah. solutions sure. uh, to the issues that Nairobi faces. Uh, what, what sort of interesting ideas came up? Um, we had really incredible ideas come up. So mm -hmm. we, uh, it was one of a few hackathons here in Nairobi mm -hmm. that saw a really big turnout of senior developers, people who have many years of experience. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the solutions that came up were anywhere from crowdsourcing blood collection, mm -hmm. um, crowdsourcing trash collection as well, mm -hmm. um, ensuring that you know trash is collected as mm -hmm. it's not done now, um, or even reporting uh, city-wide issues. Mm -hmm. So like issues with potholes that can be reported directly to the government. Mm -hmm. So essentially, it, it seems the common strand across all these solutions is that mm -hmm. one, there's a lack of data yes. uh, on what the problem is, where the problem is, and how to respond to it as well. Exactly, a lot of transparency and accountability. Mm -hmm. And how much of this is reliant, when we talk about crowdsourcing, what's the tech underlying that? Are we collecting information from people's mobile phones mm -hmm. and then aggregating that data and saying, these is where the issues are? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure, anywhere from USSD, um, even on your Android reporting data that way, even mm -hmm. using Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. So going on Twitter and directly tweeting um, the responsible person who needs to be solving that problem mm -hmm. and crowdsourcing or uh, drawing data from that mm -hmm. and then showing that to the people that need to be making those changes. All right, so, I mean, your core business is training people. Yes. Give me a sense of what the, the typical Moringa School student is sure. like. Why do they come to you and say, look, I need to get to improve my skills in coding? Yeah, so right now Moringa School, we have a 6% acceptance rate. So we definitely choose students who have like strongest at math, logic, common sense, really good personality. Mm -hmm. um, and these students, they range from even outside of Kenya. So we have students from Nigeria, from South Sudan, Burundi, Rwanda. Um, and of course, Kenyans who are part of our program. Mm -hmm. um, these students are extremely passionate about learning how to code, right? Not, not necessarily to make more money, um, be but because they see technology as a way to solve even larger problems on this continent. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll leave it there for the time being, but thank you very sure. much for your time. Thank you so much.